Hey YouTube, Colorful Coats here. I'm back, I'm sitting down, and unfortunately it's about to rain so that's why it's a little bit dark in here. But I wanted to make a review for Interview Cake. Um, if you're not familiar with Interview Cake, it's a website where you can learn algorithms. Um, doesn't matter your experience level is made for beginners or experienced people. And it's basically 46 algorithms, and um, each algorithm, they explain like the whole breakdown and how to optimize it and all that stuff. So unlike Leak Code and Code Wars and Hacker Rank and all that stuff, literally for each algorithm or data structure question, you're basically... You're basically like getting a whole page. It's Honestly, I feel like the whole website could have just been a textbook. It's very informative. So I wanted to come in here and make this review, you know, because honestly, there's not any reviews on it. Like when I was Googling, when I was Googling about using interview cake, I, I, I didn't really find anything, honestly. So I thought I would come in here and make this review. Um, what about it? Okay, so I think I'm going to start off with the positives. Oh yeah, and by the way, like I'm not getting paid for this. Um, no, and I'm not even paying for this. This is my, I, I used my friend's account, so we shared it, um, you know. And yeah, you, you, you can decide what you want to do if you want to invest in Interview Cake. I know it's $200, and I think through interviewing.io, they have like a discount where you can get it for like $150. Um, so I want to talk about the, the good and the bad. And I'll probably start with the with the good. Um, and shoot, I forgot what else I was gonna say. What was I gonna say? Oh, okay. And also, um, I didn't complete it. All right. So I have two more questions. Um, there's 46 questions. I did like 44 of them, and I just wanted to do this review. You know, get it out the way. I'll complete the rest of the questions tonight. Two more questions. And yeah, I'm going to talk about the goods. So, the goods about this. Alright, the questions for Interview Cake, they're very high quality. You get like a good balance, almost. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know if there's that many graph questions. Like I got to the last few and I didn't really see that many graph questions. But overall, you get a very good quality set of questions for the most part. Um, and there's a lot of, there's like a storyline for each question, there's humor, uh, somewhat relatable, like, details and that type of thing. And the thing is, um, when you're tackling each question, um, let me see, when you're tackling each question, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna put like good, bad, and then I'm gonna add some advice too. Um, normally what I would do would be that I would like attempt to solve it. And when I, when I did the first 15 questions, like, last year, um, I was, like, very new to programming, so I didn't tackle the rest, the last 30 until recently. Um, but what I would do was that I would just click on it and keep on reading, um, down, because I wasn't that experienced. But I feel like the more algorithms you solve, the better you get at it. So in my opinion, I would recommend that you do not just rely on interview cake. If you're a new programmer, you need to make a balance. Like, I I would say start with um, Leak Code just so that you can learn to appreciate <laughs> Interview Cake afterwards. Because you're gonna like solve like solve a, several Leak Code questions and then come to Interview Cake so that you can put like a some type of honest effort in. Like maybe solve like 10, 10 Leak Code or something. Um, and go back and forth because it's it's a lot it's a lot of reading, a lot of it and you know sometimes I cheat like sometimes I, I don't even bother, um, like attempting the code like to code the question because some of the questions that some of the questions seem like I wouldn't even be able to like I wouldn't know where to start and other questions are like once I got better at them they were so easy I was like. Well, why, why would I code this when I can just see the most optimized version? Because the version that I would do will probably not be that optimized. It would probably be, you know, like, uh, what is it called? Like, 
and log in or something like that or it would be like um what's it called again like n squared <laughs> i forgot the, t the the terminology but yeah my optimizations wouldn't have been that good but i learned so much i learned about greedy the greedy algorithms memoization like so much vocabulary and you can select like um specific questions like sql you can select python i programmed in python that's what that's what i solve all my algorithms in um and yeah you can like there's 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 questions specifically for uh languages like javascript specific questions and that type of thing and then on top of that um all the questions are basically high quality questions that you would see at big fours like I mean or, or unicorn like um if you're not familiar with big fours like there's a forum called CS career questions on reddit and they refer to the big four as Amazon Facebook Google and I think sometimes Apple and then I think like unicorn companies are like I, I don't know like like uber and you know a bunch of other big big name companies um yeah and also like if you want to see a more detailed review you should probably check the description box because I'm probably gonna forget a lot of details but other than that like I remember when I was googling some questions that Google asked specifically and then I realized that I noticed like a lot of the questions were familiar that I've seen them before like I was saying before um, a lot of the questions when I would google questions that Google asks like the 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 egg drop question, you know, where the two eggs and you have to like figure out um, the highest level you can drop an egg from. I saw that question, and then when I was doing a lot of mock interviews, I saw several of the questions, and I was like, oh shoot, you know, I would be on, I would be, I would be being interviewed by like Pramp and interviewing that IO. And then they would, and then I would be asked these questions, and they would be familiar, like I've I'd seen them already. So yeah, that's another positive. So what I normally do when I'm, um, when, you know, when I'm solving algorithms, is that, um, you know, I would, I would read the question, make sure I understand it, and then I would write it down in my algorithm. Oh no, my other algorithm. I have like five books full of algorithms by this point, but I would write them all down. And then I would put them in a visualizer. I would type it up in like pythontutor.com so that I really understand what is going on because honestly, a visualizer, it literally, it would save your life. It would, it would save your life. So if you, if you never use a pythontutor.com, you can use it, like you can change the language. It doesn't just use Python. It, it's the most amazing thing ever. Another positive thing is if you buy it, if you spend $200, and it really hurts your bank account and then you go to the questions and you're just like why did I even buy this why you can get a refund they'll, they'll refund you the $200 back um, I think in the first three months something like that I, I forgot specifics but they'll refund you the money only 2% of people even ask for a refund but you know what it's like you can take the risk you know um, it's a very good good question set um, he probably should have made it cheaper but, you know, so that more people can buy it, but he put a lot of work into it. Whoever created this, the people who created this, they put a lot of work into it, so maybe I, I shouldn't be able to say. Okay, so the negatives of Interview Cake. <clears throat> you know, obviously the first negative is that it's not free. It's $200, um, but besides that, another negative is that... Some of the questions are a little bit too, 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 too long. Um, the only question that I just refused to finish after 80% of the way through was the URL shortener. Uh, that was the longest question in the history of questions. Um, and also some of the variable names, like they are so long and it makes it hard to follow. I know they're trying to be descriptive, but it's literally a whole sentence. Like I counted one variable name that was six words long. Six words. Um, so some questions I felt like they were kind of unnecessary. <clears throat> there was one called the five-sided die. I think that's a Google question, but that was a necessary, another really um, bad question. 
<laughs> was uh, find repeats. I literally had the help of a senior engineer and a mid-level engineer. Um, I went to some meetup and we were trying to figure out the question. And the worst thing is that there is no sample input. I mean, like they don't give you like a test, a test case at the end of it. Like they'll give you the algorithm for some questions, which some like 90% of the time the algorithm works. The other time it's like theoretical, a theoretical algorithm. But for find repeat, it was very confusing. I think that was like the 42nd question or something like that. Or 40, 40th. It was the 40th question. Um, and it was... I mean, honestly, I, okay, I understood, you know, they're trying to get get us to think outside the box on, you know, a lot of the questions aren't questions to, like, they're meant to test your creativity, because that question was how to optimize for space, but that was just a very difficult question. Um, yeah, I said, some are too long, some variables are too long, uh, some questions, you know, are annoying. And they don't give sample input. And I think that's honestly, I think that's the only negative. Um, and there's not that many graph questions. And I think there was literally one back checking question. And yeah. Okay. Okay, good for interview cake. Not that many negatives. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, there's not that many negatives, right? Okay. So yeah, so you make this decision. Um, if you want to invest in interview cake, it's really good. If you want to get good at algorithms, like this is a numbers game. Don't just rely on interview cake. My top three sites are Leak Code, Code Wars, and Interview Cake. And interview cake. Um, but one of the nine things when I use Leak Code is that there would be a highly rated Python question that was answered and no one can explain it to me. Like, and yeah, that's just one of the negative that's that's honestly one of the negatives of leak code there's there's no deep explanation where that's where interview kit comes in that's why you need that di diversity like diversity is very good um so yeah so that's what i recommend i recommend that you invest in interview cake um you know take that risk and then you also solve um other websites so that you can really like take breaks like do 15 interview cake questions because it's a lot of reading and then do like another 15 leak code and then 15 interview cake and then back and forth so that you get stronger and you can actually put an honest attempt into the questions instead of being like me sometimes and just reading <laughs> the questions and writing them down. So yes, yeah, so I hope you like this review. Um, check the description box for whatever I forgot and yeah, good luck. Bye.